Imagine you were hired to film a project where the client insisted that you have to use their own in-house, top-of-the-line cinema camera. Sounds great, right? But there's a problem. You only have access to one of those cameras and you need two to get the job done. So what do you do? Now, option A is you use the camera that you already own as your B cam, but then you're gonna have to spend a lot of time trying to color grade it to get the clips from the two cameras to match. And that's gonna be a pain in the ass. Or option B, you just hire a camera for the week, but that's gonna seriously cut into your paycheck. I don't know about you, but while I do believe in having the right tools for the job, I don't like the idea of spending over a thousand sniffs hiring a camera for the week when I could buy a new piece of gear myself for that kind of wonga. What would you do? I'm not spending 1600 quid plus insurance. That's ridiculous. I'd go with option A. Anywhere I can save costs, I'll do it. I don't know, because I feel like I want to say I'd wing it and just go, you know what, I'm going to use the camera I've got. And then on the other hand, I'm like, you know what, I, I don't want to deal with this stress. So before the job starts, I'm going to experiment with option A and try to get my hybrid camera to look like a cinema camera and then ask my video buddies to see if they can tell the difference and if they can't fantastic we're on and if they can tell then I've got no choice but to suffer the cost of renting and saying goodbye to almost half my pay do you think I'll be able to do it I don't think you'll get it to match exactly I think it probably took me like six months before I felt like this looks like my work you could do it however it's a completely different sensor so you're never gonna get it bang on yes I do think you'll be asked to do it but I will say that you probably need to do some more complicated stuff than you would have to done before this is the camera that I have to use the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro known for its quality image and true colors it's not gonna make my job easy once I've spent 10 minutes figuring out how to turn the thing on and two of us finding out how to mount the top handle we we're ready to go out and get some footage. filming a couple of shots in different lighting conditions. It's night and day, but that's only what we can see on the back of the monitor, on the camera. Monitor screens lie, so I'm hoping that when I get it on the computer, they look a little closer. Now there's so many variables that can affect the image from any camera. The camera itself, the sensor, then you've got your lens choice and any filters that you might be using. For example, the Blackmagic uses an internal ND filter system, which apparently doesn't give you any color casts, so your image is gonna look the same regardless. Whereas I'm using the Polar Pro variable ND filters which do give you a little bit of a color cast but I actually quite like them but the thing is I wanted to represent this scenario in the best light because this is what videographers face on a daily basis let's just go jump into the deep end and see how well we do this is the black magic and this is the Lumix S5 II. As you can see, the difference is it's night and day. Using only tools within Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna see how close I can get. Some time later. Oh no. Oh, this is gonna be tough. <sighs> Got a long way to go. This is hard. That's as close as I can get it. Not too far away now. I think I'm as close as I can get with that. So I've got one shot looking all right, but now I need to make sure that more than one clip matches and it's not just a fluke because every shot is different. I'm just gonna copy and paste the settings. See, big difference again, completely different. Back to the drawing board, basically starting again. 43 minutes I've been doing that. Nah, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? It's just taking so long. I might just hire the camera. It's too, too much effort. I'm hiring it. I was defeated. It looked okay, but it just wasn't close enough. You could tell, and I just didn't want to spend that amount of time working on this one project. So there was only one thing I could do. Then at the perfect time, I remembered something that I'd seen before. Hang on a minute. A plugin called Cinematch, which basically converts your footage from one log picture profile to another, which could save either a lot of time or a lot of money or both. Could this be exactly what I need? It was like the planets had aligned at the perfect moment, but is it too good to be true? All the reviews were pretty good. Then I realized these were reviews for a game called Cinematch. <laughs> And when I found the actual reviews, they looked pretty promising too, though I was still skeptical. At this stage, I thought I'd give anything a whirl. Right, the moment of truth. What's this gonna look like? Cosmic blue. Cosmic blue. Cosmic blue. 
There's a slight difference, but that is so much closer and I can already tell that it's going to take me a fraction of the time that it would have taken me without using this. Oh, I nearly spent so much money. Cinematch has colour grading and matching tools built in, which are actually a lot better than the ones within Final Cut Pro. For example, the temperature and tint sliders look a lot more natural. In Final Cut Pro, it just kind of gives a wash of colour over the whole image. Whereas the one within Cinematch is really natural looking and it only applies that colour to the areas. I don't know what it's doing, but it looks good. <laughs> Then once I've got the two images as close as possible, I just added my LUT on top and then made my final tweaks and got it to where I wanted it to look. For the real test, let's see if the others can tell. Okay. Holy damn! <laughs> they look, they both look really... <laughs> they both look really good. Yeah, fair play. Okay, fair enough. That's pretty good. Supposedly these are two different cameras. They both look great. Damn close. Oh my god, I have no idea which one. Mm -hmm. uh... So they are a little bit different, but only ever so slightly. Oh, you would never know. Yeah, you would never know. It's pretty impressive that you can take two things and make them look almost identical. I mean, they both look exactly the same colours wise. Me personally, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. Not one bit. Mate, honestly, I'm I'm, I'm really impressed. It's scary how good that is. It's, it's literally transformed the colour space. <sighs> How much is it? Now it won't turn a cheapy camera with crappy dynamic range into an ARRI, but it works great for matching log profiles and getting somewhere close. At the start of this video we had only two options, spend all the time colour grading or spend all the money renting another camera. But now we have secret option C, which is Cinematch, and I know which one I would choose. If you use the link in the description you can save 10%. Now if you want to know more about the approach that I take to colour grading and colour matching, then definitely watch this video next, because I'm going to show you exactly how to colour grade using any camera. Oh, and by the way, that sequence at the beginning of me and Morgan filming, that was actually put together using clips from both of the cameras. Did you notice?